this is going to be a table leg, and uh, you can see it's um, curved. And what I've done, drilled a series of holes down the center of it. Uh, this was actually a tree that was curved like that, so the grain is all long grain all the way through. And uh, so this is going to have a groove down the center of it that kind of spirals through the leg slowly just to give it a little more movement and interest and also it helps to dry this tree out quicker because it's green. Over here you can see this is roughed out a little more but eventually this will just be a kind of a horseshoe in there. Smooth and nice but a nice little channel. What we have here is a very homemade So we have to mix up the resin. We want to make a perfect seam to glue this piece, which will eventually be maple, to this piece, which will be maple. And it will be on this curve. And so in order to do that, I have made one side nice and curved, and it's taped with a piece of uh, aluminum duct tape. Now then, what I'm going to do is leave a space, and then fill in with a resin that will be exactly up to this half and stuck to this half so I can run a, either a pattern bit or a uh, flush trimmer um, you know, and, and shape that. Okay, I've got patterns and from the patterns I've made templates that I will use for the actual shaping. I'll run them on the shaper over there. That's a pattern cutter. This will sit on here, overhang slightly, it will be held down with a couple of blocks like this, and I'll run that through the shaper and it will make an exact cut on that, and then I have another template for the next piece, it will make the exact cut on that, and they'll marry together perfectly. Alright, so here's part number six of my table, and the template that I've made, Fasten this on here. Okay. It's overhanging the template just enough to trim the shape. To secure this, I've sprayed the top of this template with a bit of uh, contact adhesive just to make it kind of sticky. And then we put these on. And that clamps it down to the template. Uh, I'm a little nervous about this one. Whenever you're using a pattern bit or flush trimmer like this on a shaper, you need to have a, something to come in slowly. You can't just get on it right away or go destroy something. And Possibly hurt yourself. So here we go.
right place. Voila. Okay, underneath here I have the pattern made. You can see the resin edge that's the exact shape of that piece beyond on the sawhorses. Right? So that's going to glue to this. And I have to now trim this all off to match up that with that template. And again, I'll use my uh, pattern cover here and a shape. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm making kind of the, the undergirding of this table, and uh, what I have are pieces that attach the legs that are not here at the moment. This is the joinery for that, and uh, I have a, a keel in the center that's going to be somewhat artistic, and it'll have these saguaro rib sticks that are kind of organic, but I needed this to be sturdy this way. So I'm coming in here at a kind of a compound angle to both this piece and the bottom of the keel. So it's kind of a um, kind of a guess, kind of a you know, I very much an eyeballing things so to get it together. So. That going there like so. Okay, um, this is the, uh, I'll call it a keel. It goes down the center of the table lengthwise. And uh, I have a piece of maple top and bottom. This will fasten to the underside of the table. And uh, they're connected by some, uh, uh, well, they're saguaro ribs that I have uh, dyed with a kind of a very, we'll call it light black. So they're kind of gray, but they'll be much darker when it's finished. I do, on occasion, use a square. The table is finally done. Um, the uh, top, some of the subtleties, uh, you may not be able to see in the video, but the glue lines and such are all curved. And Looks very nice, I must say. <laughs> and then in the background, you see back there the two chairs, one captain's chair and a side chair, both made out of uh, Russian olive.